Hello and welcome. So this will be a brand new playlist on introductory calculus, which I'll call Calculus 1, as it's known as many, in many countries. <laughs> so yeah, welcome. So this will basically be a set of videos that explain calculus from the very beginnings all the, all the way to the very end with hopefully what will be an appropriate number of examples. So you might be wondering, well, what the heck is calculus? Why do I care? Why is this important? Wow, what's what's going on here? Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. So first of all, this is going to be about 150 or so videos. Now that sounds like a lot, but each video is going to be about maybe 5 to 10 minutes at most. So it's not that much. And you'll you'll see that this should be structured fairly nicely. So it's not too bad for the most part. Now, what is calculus? So what the heck is calculus? Why do we care about the meaning of calculus? What the heck is this all about? So let's talk about this for a second. So calculus, you can think of, is the study of how things change over time. So what does that mean? How, what do you mean by things that change over time? Well, consider things like speed. So as you know, speed can be written as distance divided by time. Now, that means this is something that changes with respect to time. So for example, if I'm going 60 kilometers per hour, that means every hour I'm going 60 kilometers. So 60 kilometers per hour would be a rate of change. It's something that changes as time progresses. So this is known as a rate of change, and it's part one of the most fundamental parts of calculus. So calculus can be primarily broken down into two parts. The first part is called differential calculus. So differential calculus. So what's differential calculus? Well, as I mentioned, or a little bit earlier, uh, differential calculus essentially talks about how things change over time, or rates of change, for that matter. So rates of change. So in other words, we talk about things like speed, acceleration, and a few more other little tidbits, which we will talk about once, well, once we get there. It all addresses many sort of paradoxes or things that he wouldn't have even considered before. So that's the first part of calculus. It's called differential calculus. The second part is known as integral calculus. So integral calculus. Now, what's integral calculus? Well, before we talk about what integral calculus is, let's step back a little bit. We should talk about something that you should have learned a while ago, we call geometry. So as you know, geometry is essentially the study of shapes, objects, size, dimension, things like that. So for example, the area of a circle is pi r squared. The area of a triangle, so let me just make that a little bit higher. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. The area of a square is equal to the side length squared. Now that's all fine and good, but here's a question. Where does this come from? Where is this where does this come from? Why is it side length squared? So those are some questions that you know you took for granted while you took geometry in middle school or high school for that matter. But you never really questioned or understood why it's the way it is. Like why does pi appear? Why does r squared come? That's that's a pretty important question. Where does this one half come from? So it doesn't seem like, for example, that pi would be part of a circle. That seems kind of unusual. Now, these questions can actually be answered using integral calculus. So what is integral calculus? Integral calculus talks about the, the area under a curve. Now what the hell, what does that mean? What does that mean? So generally, if I have an axis, let me just run a, uh, an axis real quick. So if I go here and draw an axis, 
So, of course, we could just draw, you know, a circle here. We could draw a square here by connecting the two objects. And then it's not too hard to figure out how the formulas will come with some calculus. But the problem is that what if you have a shape like this? How do I find the area under this curve from, let's say, 0, which starts here, all the way to this part, which would be, I don't know, let's call it A. How do I find the area under this portion? Well, that's kind of the point of integral calculus. Integral calculus allows us to do this. And you'll see there's a very interesting and nice relationship between these two main concepts. So there's a very important relationship called, which you'll learn later, called the fundamental theorem of calculus, which kind of relates to the two quantities, the differential calculus and the integral calculus together. So that's something very interesting. So just to recap, in calculus, we are concerned with thing, we're concerned with how things change over time. That's the essence of calculus. Now, on the other hand, though, we can break down calculus into two parts, differential calculus and integral calculus. When we break these two parts down, you'll see that these two parts are related by something which we will learn later called the fundamental theorem of calculus. And in differential calculus, we're concerned with rates of change and how things change over time in very small amounts, which we will talk about later. And integral calculus is mostly concerned with the area under a curve, or the geometry, more appropriately, the geometry of how areas and curves are sort of related to each other. That might seem a bit unusual, but it's not too bad usually. Now, the next part is, what do I need to actually learn calculus? So this one is actually very interesting. So some prereqs. You should be fairly proficient in algebra. So this is kind of the big one. You don't have to be a master. For example, you don't have to know, you don't have to be like a perfect math student or something to understand calculus. By no means is that true. But you should be fairly proficient or at least have a good understanding of algebra. You don't need to be perfect, as I mentioned, but you should have a fairly good understanding of this. The second thing you need to know is trigonometry. This is not as important, trigonometry. That's better. Okay, now this is not as important as algebra, but you have to be able to still understand trigonometry to some extent. So this includes both graphing a trigonometric function as well as the identities, which you should have hopefully covered. Now, that being said, once again, you don't have to be a master. It's it's okay. You don't have to be a master in trigonometry or algebra. As long as you have some sort of skill and you have a decent understanding of it, it's not too bad. Most of calculus is actually manipulating of algebraic formulas, and only about, I would say, maybe 5% of it is uh, actual calculus. So I would argue it's about 95% algebraic manipulation. like so, and about 5% actual calculus. So that's not too bad, actually. Now, the thing is, so that being said, of course, the better you, get, uh, the better you are at algebra, the easier time you'll have, uh, you will have with this kind of course. Now, of course, we will go over some algebraic properties and some review of the important things you should know in algebra, just so you have a refresher for those who haven't taken this course in a long time, or, or most of for those who haven't taken algebra in a long time or something, rather. Now, you might be wondering, well, where is this useful? Well, lots of places, actually. This is useful in engineering, economics, statistics. And the reason for that is because many of those relate, uh, many of those concepts actually relate to the ideas of rates of change and the area under a curve. For example, 
if things move at a certain speed, that's essentially, you know, physics. And physics is a, obviously a very important part of something like engineering. In economics, you have something called marginal cost and revenue, which again relates to differential calculus, which you will see much later. Even in statistics, you have something called the bell curve. And the bell curve is essentially just a curve that looks something like that, roughly. But that's a curve, and depending on the areas underneath this thing, we can use it to kind of get a lot of useful statistical data. But that's integral calculus. So as you can see, there's kind of a very wishy-washy relationship of, of sorts between all the different parts of calculus. So I think that's enough for introductions. So let's get started. See you in the next video.